I'd like to uh, introduce the um, uh, Ignacio Olodoli, uh, who works in the um, R&D department of civil engineering firm uh, Appia 21. Uh, Ignacio has very widespread um, experience in uh, the construction sector. Uh, he's worked on projects as diverse as load transportation, renewable energy, uh, and civil engineering. Uh, he's recently published a report, Life Cycle Analysis, Life Cycle Costs, and Option Tools. Ignacio. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so today I'm here to talk with you about uh, a road construction use case. It's a little bit more uh, down to the practical keyboard than, than the previous uh, presentations. And, but before starting, I wanted to th make three comments. One you already noticed. Uh, English is not my language, so please excuse me. And if I uh, have any um, wrong spellings or I say mistakes. Second, uh, you're going to see some figures that are quite small, small in quantity and small in uh, font size. Uh, small in quantity, uh, the reason is that uh, the prices uh, we deal with are uh, based on square meter. Uh, so uh, small differences, uh, like a few cent differences in our budgets, uh, provided that the road project was 97 kilometers long and quite wide, uh, Makes uh, I could buy a, the house of my dreams with that difference. <laughs> <laughs> Small font size because I don't intend you to to read them. Uh, I'll color coded it so you will see cheap uh, is in green, expensive is in red. That's hmm. all. Third uh, comment: um, when I was asked to do this presentation, I was wondering uh, should I do a short presentation or should I do it like a little bit longer? A short presentation, I thought, would take me only six hours. <laughs> and if I measure the, the usefulness of it uh, by, like, in a childish way, by the applauses, for example, um, I asked my friend Hannes here to clap two times at least. So this is a deterministic uh, uh, solution I have. I'm sure about these two clap, but thank you very much. <laughs> If, if I would prepare a long presentation, uh, then I would have um, to spend some more time, most likely like 20 hours of my time, presenting everything to transmit all the information I, I wanted. But I, I'm not really sure I could do it faster. So it's, it's very nice to have some probabilistic uh, solutions here. And uh, I doubt that with a long presentation, uh, I might get not even a plus, but some booze. So I, <laughs> I might have minus 10 or the two deterministic uh, solution, or it could be that some more people would applaud. So I have a wide range of possible outcomes. And then I was thinking, what about if I do something in between, something a little bit uh, shorter than the long one, but then uh, have some extra slides set for the uh, end of the presentation, just in case somebody has a question and it can, they can be useful. You see, this uh, provides me some flexibility uh, to, to my presentation. And um, I can model this. It's going to use, uh, I'm going to use less hours, like 14 uh, hours, could be less, could be more. And uh, I have two stages, so if I have no questions, I still have my uh, two claps from Hannes served there. <laughs> but uh, I have a condition that could uh, happen that I have some questions from you guys, and uh, it could, I, I could get the same type of response as in the long one. So uh, I could run this. <coughs> and I'm not expecting to get an answer of it. <laughs> I, I said, I mentioned all these uh, comments just because I need you to think on this way before to, to understand our road case scenario. And by the way, you've been introduced to Select a Tool. <laughs> so, road construction. Uh, too many words. I like better this one. So, uh, on a road construction uh, project, uh, there are many parts, it's, it's quite complex. Uh, there are different structures, there are different uh, 
you know, drainage, uh, bridges, everything. What we are focused here is on the pavement structure. So uh, the objective is to get the correct uh, slice of this sandwich uh, you see in the right hand side. Um, and our engineers, what they have is they have to analyze the traffic that is currently in the area, that, that you have in the area, uh, do a prognosis of this uh, traffic evolution, analyze, of course, the soil, go to the standards, and do their design to make it the most optimal one. Uh, when analyzing the traffic, what they get is uh, different categories of traffic, like uh, T1 is uh, between 2,000 and 800 uh, heavy vehicles per day, for example, and in the soil it's pretty much the same. You have E1, E2, E3, and it's basically what quality of, of the base foundations you have for the, for the road, E3 being the expensive one, the good one, uh, E1 uh, the cheap one. And then you go to the standards, and it's it's a mess. It's uh, okay. It's complicated. You have a lot to choose from, but you go with uh, your uh, substrate. You you have uh, your foundation, and you have your objective on the uh, traffic uh, category <coughs> from the top, and then you have certain options that you have uh, to select from. Uh, for example, in this uh, type of, of uh, zooming in you can see that there are certain options that are flexible and, and others are not. Uh, if I create a road uh, structure with an E2 uh, road base, uh, if I want to, this is serving a T1 tra uh, type of traffic, if I want to change it to a T0 type of traffic because our, our traffic uh, needs to be is growing and, and, and uh, needs to be upgraded, I need to demolish all the road and rebuild it again. But if I had already constructed uh, from the beginning a T1 traffic type but with an E3 uh, road base, uh, I only have to grow the top part of it. So it's much more uh, easy uh, to upgrade the road. So this type of considerations is what we are uh, trying to explain here. Our use case, uh, so my company did this uh, road uh, uh, project for a real, um, real road in Catalonia. Uh, the initial conditions were, okay, a certain uh, road base type and uh, type of traffic category T2 jumping to T1 in certain sections. And the engineers uh, gave the solution to the administration with all the project. The solution was E3132, whatever. The question is why and uh, is it the best solution? Um, linking to what uh, William was saying about the uncertainty, uh, our traffic department does these uh, uh, studies that um, measure the traffic growth based on the history of, of the area and the measurements they do. But that's until that moment. Afterwards, you have a, a growth period. This is when the road is built. Uh, the people are changing their habits and they're starting to use this new road. And this is increasing quite a lot. And then it's, uh, after uh, that is the natural increase. So uh, in the traffic prognosis done for this uh, project, uh, you would have three uh, different uh, growths, like the pessimistic, the most likely, and the optimistic uh, uh, vision of it. Um, they also uh, study the, the section explanation, the, the substrate I was uh, talking about, and they decided uh, for that solution. What was taken into account was the price of not only the different sections, but the price of upgrading from one section to another, of uh, the different possibilities. Uh, also, the initial construction cost, the operation and maintenance cost, and the expansion costs. And this is what I was telling you about the color coding. So, um, with a discount rate of, of 6% and uh, upgrading uh, based, based on the traffic uh, analysis that they did, uh, they thought that for, for the worst case uh, sections, uh, it was going to be needed to upgrade it in, in year four, five, and nine. 
for those pessimistic, most likely and optimistic uh, growth rates. And uh, you would see that the selection they, they did was uh, reasonable because uh, they selected just to construct a simple solution, the 132 that's in the middle one uh, in the right. It's quite green, not too, too red. But uh, things changed. Um, of course, the administration is not telling us why uh, this road is not uh, constructed, but we all know that uh, this, by, by the way, was happening in 2009. Uh, the road should be uh, finished this year. The road <coughs> is not being constructed. Uh, we, we can only uh, speculate why it's not the case, but uh, what we did is um, try, of course, um, it's probably because uh, the administration doesn't have the finance right now. Uh, but we can uh, ask ourselves, as, as an engineering group, uh, is the design correct for the conditions we have nowadays? And uh, the thing is, uh, we looked uh, a few months ago again to the, to the discount rate. And the discount rate uh, in, for our sector in our country uh, has risen quite a lot. So from a 6%, uh, we went up to a 10.6%. And uh, interestingly enough, also, uh, there is, uh, this road is not a national road, uh, but there is a law affecting national roads nowadays that uh, they call the efficiency law. And uh, the government uh, enforced uh, engineering companies to use certain uh, traffic growth rates. And these are much lower than uh, what was used in the initial study. So if we link to these, these two new input uh, data, and we again do the analysis, all of a sudden we see that the outcome is not uh, straightforward anymore. It's not the same one as, as we provided the administration with uh, uh, three years ago. Uh, in fact, the flexible options, you, you see these ones over here, start making sense. You have uh, switching times that is not anymore in the short period. It's a little bit longer from 15 or 20 years. And we wanted to try to understand this uh, with uh, the selector tool. So how do we do it? Well, you've seen already a, a little presentation about uh, Selecta. Uh, you just take your design, what your engineers uh, give you for the budget, and you start uh, inputting the information. You can uh, get the information from the different uh, data banks for the prices, for the environmental impacts. You can uh, use also uh, mathematical expressions. We needed quite, quite a lot for that of those. And each of our alternatives uh, can be modeled. And you can see, for example, uh, to debug our, our model, we have uh, these uh, little charts in the, in the right-hand side, which uh, we just run one simulation. run, And, and you see where the costs are. Uh, this is all, only a cost, sorry. Uh, the costs are uh, imputed. Uh, where the maintenance is uh, happening and uh, where the external, extraordinary rehabilitation costs are, are happening in time. These are little tiny histograms. Our model is a little bit more complicated. And this was uh, done without the databases. When the databases came into, into hand, we got uh, very happy about it, so we started growing the model. And this is our lightest version. It's three is stage one. Um, some of the initial results that that we have, uh, yeah. Well, we have the the data in, in uh, table formats, and what I like most is this type of, of graphs in which you can mix whatever units you have. Like in the beginning, I I mixed uh, hours. On, on claps. Uh, you can use euros and, and CO2 equivalent. And uh, we have uh, the explanation of, of which one uh, could be uh, more convenient for, for your project. Uh, you have also box plot charts. And if you increase the, the traffic uncertainty, 
I'm not sure if it's the correct one, what, what the government is, is doing. Uh, what I get is this type of, of uh, results that are quite um, helpful, uh, trying to, uh, the little uh, blobs there are trying to give you an idea of the uncertainty on each of the axes that you have. And uh, finally, what we did is once you have the model there, it's very easy just to repeat repeated with different values and, and this is what we get excited about. So um, we changed from a 6% uh, discount rate to a 10.6% discount rate and the question is what's going to happen in the future. So we did a sensitivity analysis and we went from 4 to 14 and also uh, we, we've seen that the uh, traffic growth uh, had a big uh, uh, uncertainty. So we uh, made it a uh, change from 1.3% to a 4.3%, but also the uncertainty of it uh, was increasing. And what we found out that uh, was that um, the initial uh, design that our civil engineers uh, chose uh, was uh, based on a low discount rate and very high uh, uh, traffic growth rates. So. What they were doing, in fact, was uh, perhaps over-investing, perhaps playing it safe. You know, engineers just, I don't want this to fall apart, so just put an extra uh, percentage. It's, it's quite typical from them. So they were in the high spec uh, range. And what we got when we analyzed uh, the new figures, we got a, a solution in the lowest spec range for a very high discount rate, which is due to many factors, one of them the risk premium of the country, et cetera. And also, uh, economy has gone low, lo much lower, uh, traffic growth also stalled, so very high rates, uh, very small uh, traffic growth rates gives us uh, the optimal selection of a lowest spec uh, solution. Um, what we have is, um, a tool that is not, uh, what was mentioned, it's not the crucible uh, trying to give us uh, an insight of the future, but we, we have a tool that helps us understand the decisions that we have to, to make today. Uh, it's capable of doing the deterministic part, it's capable of doing the probabilistic part, it's capable of helping us to model uh, real options, the flexibility, the cost of these flexibility options. On top of that, doing nothing else, that, that's the uh, added bonus for my, on my side is that we have the LCA included in it. So, questions? Thank you. Uh, Ignacio, thank you ever so much for that. Uh, I think you did um, a great job of condensing what was a 20-hour presentation into, <laughs> I think, uh, something less than 30 minutes. So um, thank you thank you for that. Um, your English was perfect, by the way. So uh, I think uh, far better than if I tried to speak in, in Spanish, I think. So that, uh, that wouldn't be difficult. Um, you've identified, uh, this demonstrated uh, a case study using the selector tool of um, uh, load construction types. And I think, to me, you, uh, you showed quite clearly the, um, the impact of uh, assumptions associated with discount latent traffic forecasts on, on the outcome. So it's a very helpful uh, example of how a life cycle uh, costing through the assessment tool can be used. You, you produced a model for a, um, a road that didn't get built. Um, have you um, any indication as to whether uh, the decisions that you took with that whole life costing model actually influenced that decision? in the first place? Mm. Okay, first, uh, a comment on, on your question. We didn't build a model of a road that was not built. We did uh, a model of uh, the road construction. I mean, this same model is going to be useful for the company in the next roads that we have to construct. Based that they have to be under the same standards. Uh, and no, I don't think the, the administration uh, was, uh, decision was based on, on these uh, studies. But I can only speculate on that. Sorry. Yeah, I apologize for my English. I, but, for me, it's pretty much like the last presentation, really. It's about 
how to construct an analytical solution for making a decision today and then keep referring to that as time changes and growth occurs or shrinkage occurs. It's today's thinking f for today's problem, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Certainly. Uh, I mean, and linking with the, with the comment I, I mentioned before, the good thing about having modeling is that you can update it every day if you, if you want and run it again and, and thousands of simulations and, and get get the updated uh, answer of whether your decisions are optimal or not. And for me, hopefully, this could be used by the clients directly who are responsible for the road system once it's been constructed by the professionals. Once the tools have been constructed by the professionals, it can be used by the administrative. Or the operations and maintenance yeah. department, or indeed. The, the procedure is there for everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ignacio, in, in, in terms of the, um, the efforts from uh, the Select Tool, they look to um, me very, very clear and uh, very powerful tools to convince the client that they should go down one route or another, or at least to encourage discussion about the, um, uh, the, the particular options. Um, do you believe that if the tools used in the future, it will be understood by the end client and they will act on it, or do you think there are other factors which the, yeah, which will the client will, will, will consider? know nothing about politics or market. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But politics and marketing don't make all that, I suspect, is, is, is the answer to that. And, and, and the other question is uh, to do with the practical implementation. Uh, you've clearly had to insert a, a, an awful lot of data into the model about the embodied carbon associated with materials and such like. Um, what confidence do you have that those numbers are, are, are right? And to what extent does it matter that they're not entirely accurate? Uh, that's the nice thing about the sensitivity analysis. That, uh, it, it tells you how the output is changing depending on how your input is, is uh, variable, how variable it is. Um, what I feel is that with this type of, of procedures, this type of tools, what you have if, is uh, the freedom to, uh, if you suspect something might change, uh, put Drop something. There are the certainty there. If you have analyzed your risks and you feel that the, the petrol prices are going to change or uh, etc., I mean, this model it's quite simple. It could be much more complicated. You know, the asphalts, uh, the prices depend on the petrol side. So uh, I'd love to uh, go back to it and add this uncertainty uh, to it. It's um, it's how you deal with it and how you you how much time of course you want to spend uh, for a certain project. Okay, thank you. Question. The, the example here is that uh, it's a fairly simple tool that you can interrogate over time. Uh, the interesting thing here is that if you remodel that, assuming they are going to build your road, uh, and I hope they do, uh, that that if the transport increase in, uh, goes up from 10 to uh, 20,000 vehicles a day and you'd ex expect it to go up from 10 to 15, then you can remodel and work it out. Which brings us actually very closely back to the first question I think of the day, which is how long does an entry system last when it's getting beaten about by uh, people coming in and out of a, a building? Or how long will the, uh, the lift survive? Both of these factors are dependent on the use of the building or the use of what's going <laughs> On. And I think that's where it comes back to our own professional bodies, our own organisations, and perhaps with uh, support from BRE and uh, uh, Busier and others, that actually the information to do with your road is only of interest to road people. The interest to do with lifts is only people uh, interest to people dealing with lifts, and uh, entry systems is de dependent on the people using those. But the answers are available now. It's just that the people who then want to extract that information don't have access to it. So it's down to our own organisations to collate that information and put it together so the rest of us can make best use of it. And I think that's a fundamental that must come out of this kind of environment. Okay, thank you for that. So sorry, not a question, but a statement I think that we all need to take on board. Thank you. Um, Ignacio, I just wondered if you could comment on 
your final analysis when you'd got your two-dimensional output of your variables for traffic growth and your variables for discount rate showed three different specifications for the road design. But it's from that you've got you've actually got six um, that were ultimately to be chosen from. And so I, was, I suppose my question is, is there as much importance to the user or to the end user in actually knowing which of their available decisions are not even on the chart as knowing which of the three might be kind of um, to be chosen between? I'm not sure if I follow, but I'm pretty sure that falls on who has the criteria of decision. Yeah. I mean, um, who is the one that is going to decide what discount rate you have to apply and why? And uh, are you interested on, if it's not road construction, whatever, on a different solution or not? Yeah. I don't know if I've answered uh, your doubt. OK. No, I, I, was, I think I was looking at the, the range of um, specifications you've got at the bottom of your chart. And you've got six different upgrade scenarios and six different colors there. But only three yeah, of them. Where, where are the three that are missing? Yes, yes. Probably have a should extend uh, the uncertainty to find them somewhere in, in, in the ah, okay, so they're parts, right? Further away further. from where we're looking. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It could happen also that uh, they're just not the optimal solution because what I applied here was my criteria of choosing uh, the most economical uh, uh, LCC uh, solution at the end of the day. And I'm, I'm worried because I'm talking something against uh, what Andy was saying in the morning. But uh, yeah, my manager is like always pushing to get the most uh, economical uh, solution towards the customer also. It's my criteria following. Any further questions? I think it's to a close on that point. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um,